I have missed you so much. This is just a preview of what's to come here on Creative Video Tips this fall. I want to show you how you can use the bin area over here in DaVinci Resolve, not actually using a mouse at all, completely using a keyboard. And the first thing I'm going to do to set this up to make it easy to understand what we're looking at and to not make mistakes is go under the user preferences, uh, user UI settings, and turn on show focus indicators in the user interface. With that selected, you can see it made like a red bar, and that lets you know, hey, I've got this area selected. Because sometimes you might have the timeline area selected, and that uses different keyboard shortcuts than the media pool. And in fact, to get started, the first thing you need to know is that this left area here uses a different keyboard shortcut to get to than this area. This is called like the clip area, and this is called the bin area. These folders is different than here. And it's pretty easy to remember because it goes one, two, command one, Command 2. If I wanted to access the master bin area, I would just hit Command 1, and then the first thing I would always want to do is probably make a bin. That's Command Shift N to make a bin. We could call that today's date. Um, what is it? 0818. And then if we wanted to make another bin, Command Shift N, just like that. Let's do this one for 0819, and you get the idea for, for tomorrow's date. Now, if you have a bin selected and you want to make a bin inside that, you could do that with Command Shift N again. Just make sure that bin is selected, and that's where it's going to put the new bin. So maybe I call this one 8 a.m. because it's 8 a.m. So that is how you can create bins just using the keyboard. Uh, just remember it's Command 1 to get to this area. Let me show you how to make a timeline in here real quickly because that's another one that's good to know. So Command N instead of Command Shift N. Command N for new timeline will make a new timeline and it'll place it in the bin that it was uh, that, that was selected by this area over here. So the command one gets you here to select the clip area. Command two gets you over there with the up and down arrows. From here, it's easy to actually move things around without touching a keyboard too. And you can do that with cut and paste. So if I wanted to move this timeline out of this 8 a.m. bin, um, let's say I needed to put it in a 9 a.m. bin instead. Uh, first, I would make the 9 a.m. bin. I'd hit Command-1 to get to the bin area. I would hit Command-Shift-N to make a new bin, make a 9 a.m. bin, and let's uh, go over here to this timeline. And to get this to the 9 a.m. bin, I'm going to hit Command-X to cut it. And then I'm going to go back to, and so this is saved in your, your, you know, your clipboard in your computer. Going back to Command-1 to choose the bin I want to go to. I wanted to go to 9 a.m and then command V. So it's a cut and paste operation. Simple enough, right? It's out of there and it's into there. If I want to see it, I can move, use my arrows to get over there. So that's some of the basics right there. The next thing I kind of want to go through um, is about file naming and spaces versus underscores versus dashes. And the way I want to explain that is I'm a fan of dashes or spaces, but not underscores. And I'm going to show you why right now. So now that I'm in the master band, I'm going to hit Command-2 to go down to here. And let's say I have a, a timeline here that I want to edit. Um, you can I'm going to get to the shortcut in a second, but you can actually auto-select that with your keyboard as well. And if you have spaces, you have the luxury of using the same tools you would in a text editor. And that's on a Mac, it would be using Option and the left and right arrows on the keyboard to go to beginnings of new words because it recognizes that space. And then obviously you could you could use the arrows to go one character at a time, but if you use the shift with option, you can select whole words at a time that are next to each other. So this is really useful if you need to rename things. Now going back to why I like spaces and dashes instead of underscores is let me show you what happens here if I put underscores. Now if I use the option it skips over it. So it's still searchable to those words, but it's really more difficult to edit. And if you were to go back to using the mouse, you can always double click a word, but if you double click this, it thinks that's one continuous thought. Now the alternative to using underscores and is maybe a little bit more user friendly for web um, searches as well, if you didn't know that, is dashes. So dashes on here, work a little bit nicer if you, there's a reason that you can't have spaces like in a final file name that needs to be uploaded you can use dashes instead and that gets rid of the spaces but you can still use option left and right to jump between words so if I want to just select a couple words at a time 
you know, it gets that whole word. Now you do have to do the extra step of selecting the dash, but that's much better than dealing with the underscore. Um, so that's just, uh, my, my preference is spaces when you can, unless you, for some reason, you need to have no spaces in a file name. So to recap on naming, it's option left and right gets you different words and then add shift makes those a selection if you need to rename them. Um, to quickly go to another clip that's once you already have one selected, you can hit the tab key. That's just a default um, setting so that if you needed to make this one be 02 and then go to the next one, you hit tab to go to the next one without having to select it. So that's all with the keyboard, okay? Uh, return locks that in just like that. And now I'm gonna to get to some of the keyboard customization that I set up so that I could actually go to this area here and rename it without touching the keyboard. And the first one is called rename. I have that set to F2. And that just basically is the equivalent of me taking the mouse and clicking to rename it. Um, I didn't know about this one until just this week. Um, so Command Shift K gets me my keyboard settings. And the way you'll find this and set this up is just type in rename and you'll see that as a media pull option. So that's the first one, okay? The next one that I found super useful to have available all the time is gonna be one that actually loads your timeline down in the, the timeline area. So let's say I go over here and pick a different uh, timeline that's not active. By the way, you know the active one because it's highlighted, it's wider than the rest. So in list view, it's harder to see. It gets like a check mark if it's in thumbnail view. But let's say I wanted to do this sequence right here and load that up. I'm gonna say open in timeline with command return and that opens that up so that I can start working with that without having to use the mouse. So if you want to see where that's at, you could right click on it and say open in timeline. So I have that set to command return. This is another custom setup. Uh, you get to this, you know, command option K gets me my keyboard settings and then you can just type open in timeline and you can see right there, I have that set to command return. The next custom setting I use in media pool all the time is gonna to be to duplicate a timeline. So let's say I wanna duplicate this center crop, no resizing 03, I would hit option D, and there we go, we've got our copy. It goes right on down there. Um, I don't know if you can resize columns without the mouse, so that might be one thing you use the mouse for, but now that that's right there, I can rename it with my F2, it selects it, and make that four, you know, version that up, something like that. So that one is found under Command Option K to get to my keyboard settings again. Duplicate item is what I have that set to. There's a duplicate here. I don't actually know what that does. I've had duplicate item for a long time and it works, so I'm sticking with that. Okay, a couple more uh, media pool tricks that are really useful to know. Um, one is reveal and finder. I use that all the time. Uh, the way I'm gonna use that in this instance is I'll, let's say I have this, this timeline selected down here. I'm gonna go back to the media pool with uh, Command 2, go to the clip that I'm curious about, and let's say I need to know where this JPEG actually lives on a disk, I would hit Command R and it opened up on a different window for me, but you can see it took me exactly to this path. Oh, while I'm here, I'm gonna show you another trick that's not really a Resolve one, but it's a Mac OS one, and that's to find the file path if you need to send it to someone. And the way you can do that is you right click on it and then hold Option on the Mac, and you actually get more options. So you can get Copy as Path Name, and as soon as you get copy as path name, what that does, obviously it gives you the path name, right? So like you have the path name copied exactly. So if you're working on a shared server, that's a great way to get that path name. You could start with find in media pool, go to this area, reveal in finder, and then copy path name. Really fast way of, of telling someone where something's at. Um, and as far as reveal and finder, where that one's at, command option K to get there. You know, if you just you remember these names, you can you can easily search for them. Reveal and Finder I have set to Command R. That's another custom thing that I don't think is a default. Okay, we are plowing along now. The next thing I want you to know about the media pool over here is I normally always work in list view most of the time, but a lot of times I need to have two of these open at once. Uh, and the way that you can do that, there's there's a three dot menu that's called Show Dual Pane Media View. Well, you can actually set this up as a keyboard shortcut, so you can toggle between them as much as you need to. And what I do for that is I have them as long as this area, this Command Two area is selected, or Command One, hit S or D. So S for me is single, D is dual, S single, D dual, and that's just set up under keyboard shortcuts. You know. 
search single, single pane. There you go. S for single, D for dual pane. And you get the idea. The other thing to know here is if you ever use the reveal and finder command in here, which is, or sorry, find in media pool command, which I have set to option F, it's always going to point back to whatever was last selected. So if you want to see this clip show up in your bottom dual media pane viewer, you select this and then you say um, find a media pool and it loads it down here. If I had selected up here first and then did find a media pool, it shows it up there. Sometimes you don't want to mess with what you have open in here if you have a really big project. So that's why it's important to know how you can force it to know which media pane pool to get to. As far as I know, there's no way of using the keyboard to target which one of these um, is active. If there is, I really want to know. One more uh, really good tip on searching a project for a previous export. Let's say this project is huge, right? And this, this, this center crop, no resizing was output with the matching file name. Let's put this in a bin and hide it, okay? And I want to know, I'm coming in uh, a day late on a project and I need to, to find that to make a change to it. There's this search button right here and you would think you'd just go in here and, and search for it. Sometimes you'll find it, sometimes you won't. Now the thing to know is there's a little carrot next to this that's for all bins or selected bins. Now I like to change this to all bins right away, but it's not the default. Normally it's going to be selected bins. And if it's selected bins and you search for that, look, there's no results. <laughs> uh, you'll get a result if it, you, you actually clicked on the bin that it lived in, but usually you don't know where it is because you're not in that project. So if you click the master bin, which it'll have everything in the project and then choose all bins, it might take a while depending on how big the project is to find it, but you're going to get there. Oh, and to get rid of this, search area window thing. This will get you, uh, if you don't realize you have this selected, is just to click this button and that goes away. All right, so the last thing I want to show here is command one, I'm going to get to a clip. Let's go to that the one JPEG that's in this project, command two to get over to it, is if I want to make a timeline with just this clip or a whole selected set of clips, you know, you could shift to select a bunch of stuff in here. You can do that. And the command is to right click, create new timeline using selected clips. Well, I have this set to command T. So if I need to quickly make a string out to see what all the footage is on the timeline, because usually it's more useful on a timeline than a bin, this is what I'll do. So rather than clicking it, let's just hit command two to make sure we have these selected, command T. And it's gonna ask us if you wanna make a new timeline, we're gonna say yes. You can name it, of course, command four to get down over there. And we can see we have these nested uh, sequences and the JPEG. Hey, if you stuck around till now, thank you so much. If you're a super fan, I finally have some merch you can help support the channel with. If you go to creativevideotips.com, I have t-shirts with, with the logo on there, but there's also some really fun ones that say stuff about cutting and resolve and nodes are better than layers. So if you like nerdy t-shirts, check those out.